Death Talk, episode 15. I have an elite group of podcasters with me today, and a very special guest as well. I'll introduce the usuals, and we'll go from there. Uh, Caleb, how's those hey. chips? How's those chips? They're good. All right, cool. Uh, Chris, hi. Hello. How's it going? Good. And Mark. Hi. And our very special guest today, Melanie. Hi, how are you? West (laughs) Coast! Melanie uh, owns and operates Melotov Records. What's up, podcast (laughs) listeners? Yeah, so we're really excited that she came on the show today. Uh, It's our first guest. I'm extremely nervous that we have a guest today. I'm extremely nervous being here. Like, my heart rate is insane right now. I just, okay. I'm just worried I'm going to sound, like, so terrible and, like, have the worst nasally, just, like, deep-sounding, terrible voice, so. Oh, don't no, worry. Mark s- sounds like sound shit great. every week, and oh. <laughs> it's fine. Fantastic. I, I added awesome. him. I make him sound cool. Well, you know the, uh, you call, I don't know how Caleb got the name Scumbag Caleb, because I listened to the previous episodes <laughs> to, like, prep, and I'm I was so like, glad. come on, that's terrible, but then, like, I was like, you know what, like, Chris should have a nickname, Miserable Chris, because oh, you yeah. just sound so sad Miserable Chris, every that's time. a good one. <laughs> You're just like, yeah, I'm just... hey. <laughs> <laughs> you hit it right Fair enough, nail. fair enough. Poor Holy... Miserable Chris. Oh, <laughs> like... uh, Miserable Chris. Perfect. Well, oh my God, that's so great! I'm, yeah, I'm so glad you said that's that. Gonna, <laughs> that's gonna stick. And that's gonna be great. Before Sorry, we send Chris. it over to miserable Chris, uh, we actually uh, I got to don't have Mark guests. in the newsroom. He's gonna tell us about all the uh, Death Wish news going on today. <laughs> no, that's not. I mean, that's not. That's not the intro. All right. So, uh, plenty of stuff going on news wise. Um, uh, record Store Day is coming up uh, this Saturday, the 18th. Uh, we have uh, two Record Store releases through Death Wish. The first one, uh, they'll be on our store for sale uh, this weekend. Uh, the first one is They're already a new... up. They'll be already up by the time this goes up. Oh, you're right. Yeah, okay. So they'll, they'll be already up when you're listening to this. Uh, there's a new 7-inch from Self-Defense Family called uh, Talia, or, backed with or Taxi. Talia. Or Talia. <laughs> Talia, Talia. It's a 7-inch with... Um, the A side is a new song from their upcoming LP to be released at a later date, and the other song is exclusive to this release. It's a just a B side, um, and we also have Integrity, the Blackest Curse repress. This has been out of print for a good amount of time. I, Rich, do you have a a guess of when the last time we had this in stock? Oh man, I, I'm guessing it's a uh, it's been a year or two at least before, since, well, since we've had it. So. I mean, I started working here two years ago. We didn't have it then. Okay, so. yeah, you know what? <laughs> time flies. So yeah, yeah, it could have been then. So yeah, we have uh, those two coming out through Death Wish. We also have a few record oh, sort of sorry, exclusive. Mark, to interrupt you just for a second about the Blackest sure. Curse, but we um. We went ahead and updated all the packaging on it. So uh, it now comes with a 36-page book inside of it, and it's also on a wide-spine LP jacket. It's in a wide-spine LP jacket. So uh, it's uh, it's cooler than the, the last version, so it's uh, you should check it out if you haven't already. It still has the cool um, – I'm going to get this wrong, but what, what's it called when um, the front of the cover has, like, that shiny uh, Oh, yeah, print? yeah. It's got the integrity skull on yep. the front with uh, – it's a spot UV varnish. That's what it is. Yeah. I didn't know what that was called. Cool. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so then we also have a few uh, Record Store Day exclusive titles uh, through Anybody's Flowers. That's uh, Patrick Kinlan's other label. Um, he well, There's a 7-inch coming out by Lost Leader called Flex Your Hair. That is a band fronted by Patrick. And also a seven, a new 7-inch by Night Sins called Down to Drown. And uh, those will both be up uh, as you're listening to this. And um, we're also doing a record store day sale throughout the weekend. Uh, it's 20% off of everything in the store, right? Yeah, including Melotov releases. Yeah, and speaking of Melotov releases... Oh, wait, Melanie's you got to get a code, Mark. How are you supposed to oh, get that sale? Oh, you guys didn't put the code in the doc, man. <laughs> it's a RSD2015. So, Perfect. Yeah, use that at checkout and get 20% off your order this weekend only. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So don't sleep oh, on it. RSD2015. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So we typically only do Death Wish news, but since we have a very special guest, I wanted Melanie to 
tell everyone about some Melotov stuff going on. Over Thanks, to guys. you, Melanie. Thanks for that wonderful transition. That was great. It feels scripted, and it's not, listeners. It's uh, no, that was good vibes. Totally, good vibes. Yeah. Um, I just tons right of off stuff. Top of my head. Right off the top of my head, I did that. <laughs> Off the cuff. Yeah. There's a uh, miserable Chris and off the cuff rich. So we're just all getting nicknames oh, today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this this will be this is a Friday. This goes up tomorrow, right? Yes. For sure. Okay. Yeah. So for all you uh, Los Angeles, Southern California based listeners out there, uh, I'm throwing a show at Los Globos in Silver Lake. It's I'm co-hosting it with Long Live the Swarm Apparel. Um, ACX DC, Seizures, Larry Susan's going to DJ set, Fissure's playing. It's going to be a great time. Uh, we're going to go to Cha Cha Lounge afterwards, have some beer, so just hang out and do your thing. It'll be over by 10, so you could do whatever you is that you do on a Friday night at 10. I can't and wait to see East- it all on Instagram. Oh, yeah. The, it's just going to be selfies of myself and then, like, maybe a picture of, like, you know, a band here and there. Um, and then for the East Coast fans over in Philadelphia, Outer Heaven's playing with Nails and Incendiary at Voltage Lounge. And they're going to have a ton of new merch, um, including some special releases of the LP that we're still <clears throat> waiting on. But it's test presses with screen printed covers, so it's going to be super exclusive and cool. So go pick that up. Uh, Tiger Flowers just wrapped up recording with Converse Rubber Tracks. They did a few songs for their series, and that may see a 7-inch release in the future. Who knows? And uh, what else? Got a lot of news. Uh, ACX DC, the represses for the self-titled LP we did last year. Hasn't even been out a full year. It's almost out of press, so thank you for everyone that picked that up. Um, We're going to have brand new colorways for that, and then we're doing this crazy crazy project it's going to be a ouija board so a shape disc vinyl in the shape of like a ouija board blanchette and then the jacket will be like a trifold and unfolds to a ouija board so like you know uh justin of vitriol records did the graph orlog doom box 10 inch which was super rad but justin if you're listening i see your doom box and i raise you a ouija board (laughs) so balls in your court um Tidemouth, which is a band from California, they're like a death rock, like post-hardcore, kind of like a gothic Murder City's Devil, Murder City Devils type deal. Uh, has a record coming out. Maybe I'll have a hand in. I don't know. That hasn't been quite announced yet. And uh, that's it for Melotov news right now. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for the Thank Melotov you. news. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of news, a lot of things happening. Uh, go to shows, buy records, uh, just go wild. This is a pretty busy weekend, so everyone have fun. Should should we also mention the felon running around Beverly? Yeah, there's a felon running <laughs> around Beverly. Be careful if you're in the Beverly, Massachusetts area. Uh, Lock your doors. Be careful on the streets. We're literally on the opposite coasts right now. It's pretty cool. Right? No? Yeah, no, it's super rad. <laughs> It's 11 a.m. here, and it's, like, sunny outside. It's probably miserable and cold and dark and terrible on the East Coast. Usually it is. Usually it is. (laughs) Um, It's finally warming up, at least. (laughs) So, uh, Melanie, hi. Hey. Uh, I wanted to... uh, (laughs) What are you laughing at, Mark? (laughs) Just, Melanie, hi. Um, I am rich. (laughs) While we have you on the podcast, we wanted to... Just talk about your uh, label a little bit and uh, see uh, see what see what's up, wh- how you started, how you're how you're doing, you know what's going on, <laughs> all those things. Um, I wrote in the show notes uh, why the fuck would you start a record label? So I'm going to start yes, I, off with that one. Um, sure. What, what made you What made you start a record label one day? Uh, I discovered early on I'm a masochist, so I do really well when. I'm stressed out and miserable and broke all the time. Um, Just kidding, guys. I'm really not that sad of a person. (laughs) (laughs) I like in my formative years, like high school and, and, you know, going to shows and really discovering bands and things like that. Like I really liked the promotional aspect of it. So I liked, you know, if I went and saw a band, like everything was still pretty much word of mouth. Like you only really had 
MySpace at that time, which, you know, I was super resistant to social media, which is weird now because I feel like I'm on it 24-7. But uh, I, I just liked, you know, the developmental aspect and promoting it and passing out show flyers and, like, getting people to come to shows and everything. So I thought it'd be cool to do A&R for a record label, which is artists and relations and typically the people that like find the new talent. And I interned at Metal Blade for like two to three months, um, junior year and just did like press kits and stuff like that. And I was like, this is sick. I could probably do this on my own. And, uh, that's the very cool. Were you, you were in high school when you interned? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's awesome. That's it awesome. Was, you don't see you. many labels take on, you know, like interns in high school. That's really cool. It was honestly, it was like, I was so naive about it. Like it, it, thinking about it now is so laughable because the way I approached it was just so unprofessional. Like I basically sent the metal blade, MySpace a MySpace message. And I was like, do you guys need interns? Like I loved your label. <laughs> and they're like, actually, yeah. Do you have a way to drive down here? And I live in uh, Santa Clarita, which is a suburb of LA, and there's not really anything going on. So, like, if you want to do anything worth doing, you have to drive to it. So I was like, yeah, of course, you know, I'll drive to Simi Valley in a Mustang with gas prices five dollars a gallon. Like, totally worth it, and it was totally worth it. So that's really cool. Like, it's uh, it's always interesting to find out how people start their labels, um, and a lot of people I feel were kind of thrown into it. It's almost like, well, I got to do this sort of thing to do whatever. Right. Like. Is that, like, with your first release, like, how did that all come about? And what was your first release? First release was for a local hardcore band called Charged. Uh, They're from Santa Clarita, so my same hometown. And, you know, like, listening to other friends and how they've started their labels is, like, you know, they had a band and no one would release their stuff, so they just did it themselves. And, like, I played guitar and, and a little bit of drums or whatever, but I never had a band. I just liked, like, working with them and with Charged, like, they would play these shows, and, like, um, Larry Susan, who's playing that show Friday, he grew up in the same, his name is Jared Nickerson, and grew up in the same, like, area, and he was friends with, like, Corey Williams of Internal Affairs, and so he would bring all these, like, hardcore bands into Santa Clarita, and Charged would open a lot, and, like, you know, it's, no one's really there for the opening band, but I was like, this is so rad, like, people need to know about this, and I approached them, I was like, can I put out a CD for you guys, like, you have gone to all your shows out here and yada yada and that's literally what it was like that's they cool. had already recorded new material and were planning to just self-release it themselves and um you know i got my paycheck from work and was like i'll just put it all towards this and it was 18 at the time so like right out of high school i just kind of jumped headfirst into it and so. when, <laughs> and when you asked like hey can i put out your cd like, did you actually know how to put out CDs? Like, no, did, oh no, not okay. at all, not at all. I was so, like, how did you learn? Did you just kind of just do it and, and figure it out? Yeah, trial and error. Yeah. Um, just I like researched it. I think I did it through Disc Factory. I don't even remember, or maybe because I don't even think I approached like Rainbow Records, which is kind of local to where I am, and uh, they do CDs and vinyl and everything like that. But just like a basic, I didn't even have like a jewel case for it. It was super DIY. Like we were just going to do our own little jewel case. And like, by the time the record came out, like it was at the end of high school. So everyone was ready to go to college and they ended up breaking up like right when the CD came out. So (laughs) I was like, (laughs) um, Um, but yeah. (laughs) So was your first release, like, would you, and you know, and people have different, um, uh, ways to sub saying that it was successful, but was it successful for you? Like, does it, did you, and, and not really, you know, money wise, but like, did you learn enough to keep it, keep going? You obviously did. Um, successful in the sense that like something was completed start to finish and, you know, able to get this band a finished product within like a reasonable time, which, you know, I, I didn't, I totally underestimated the value of that now, (laughs) but, um, so I would say it was successful. It was definitely a learning experience. And I feel like every release that I've done in every year, I've been able to learn something and like, Oh, I definitely got to do that differently. Or like this worked for me and blah, blah, blah. But you know, successful in the sense that like word got out that I was doing this in a band from San Francisco called Dance for Destruction, uh, had hit me up and they wanted to see if like I'd be interested in doing vinyl at all. And I was like, oh, I, I don't even know the first thing about doing that. But um, they were coming down 
to like LA and playing a couple shows. So I met up with them there and saw them play. And I was like, this is super rad. Um, yeah, let's definitely do it. Like, and I told him, you know, I've never done vinyl. Like the CD is the first thing that I've ever done. And they're like, that's cool. Like, let's just do it. And so like was stupid enough or naive enough to, uh, take that on. So it's just, it's totally trial and error. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. It's, it, you know, and I don't know, I've been, you know, working at Death Wish for like, uh, almost 10 years now and it's always changing. It doesn't end. You know what I mean? There's always right. like different approaches and different ways of doing things and you have to kind of figure it out along the way, you know? Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, so you so have to be cool. adaptable and like be able to adapt at a moment's notice and creative, like, you know, like, Oh, this happened or the lacquers broke, which are what you use to, to press the actual, uh, vinyl. So like, if you're trying to meet deadlines and blah, 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 like you just have to, you know, like you said, adapt. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, was, and off the top of your head and maybe, I don't know, was there like a, a more difficult project that you've done as far as releases go? Like, um, as there, has there been one that's like, man, that I really, that there was a lot of work to get this thing together. Um, you know, you know, e- either packaging or, 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 uh, audio wise or things like that. Um, that's a good question. I mean, I think the most involved packaging that I've done to date was when, uh, worked with the banner and did the re-release of each breath haunted, yeah. um, as a gatefold. And then it was a picture disc and getting those songs like remastered and getting that in and just kind of getting, you know, when it's hard when it's like, not just, well, at least for me anyway, I wouldn't call myself a control freak, but like, I like to handle everything, all aspects of it. So when you have to, you know, rely on someone else to meet your deadline or get something in for you or complete the artwork and, that was just, that was definitely the most challenging because we had so much stuff that <laughs> yeah. had to like come together for that, whether it was, you know, getting the tracks from Ferret and then being okay with that and getting the art done and, you know, figuring out cost wise, like we only did 300 versions of that because uh, Joey, I love him to death. He loves to do like super exclusive stuff, which I'm totally into. Um, but, you know, with a gatefold and a picture disc, like 300 units is kind of not the most cost effective. So, you know, that, yeah. I, challenging, but the one of the most rewarding That's releases. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's every project can be, you know, different and, uh, some can go like real smoothly and it's like just done like that. And then you just never know what sort of hang up or, or something that you have to overcome to get this, you know, release out. But, um, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's cool to hear. Um, uh, this is another, I, I'm always interested to talk to people about how they listen to music. And uh, I only ask that because uh, I feel like everyone's different. Like, how do you, how do you listen to, you know, bands? Like, how do you, how do you, do you find things on Spotify, Bandcamp? Are you listening to a lot of vinyl? Like, what do you do every day? Every day would definitely be Spotify because, you know, I'm, podcasting to you from my day job as property manager and you know where I live and where I have to report to work to every day is 45 minute 45 minute commute each way so it's definitely easy for me to like make a playlist on Spotify download it and listen to that on the way up and then while I'm at work you know I have that so like every day out of convenience yeah it's Spotify or you know, band camp if I can't find it on Spotify. Um, but I do, you know, I do prefer vinyl. And when I have time to like sit and read and insert and just kind of like, you know, I want to listen to the record as it was intended to be listened to, listened to, then definitely vinyl. So that's cool. Hopefully that that's answers cool. Yeah. Question. I'm always interested in that <laughs> stuff. I, I always see, I, I follow, I follow you on, on Spotify. So I always see what you're listening to. <laughs> it's pretty eclectic. It's like Kendrick Lamar <laughs> and then like, yeah. <laughs> I love, that's my favorite part of Spotify. I love hearing like what people listen to all day. That's it's how cool. I found out about beach slang. Like I was lurking on Tim <laughs> from Panic Records. I was like, what is this? This sounds tight. And like fell in love with that. That's if you haven't heard of beach slang, really like fuzzy 90s type stuff, it's worth looking into. But yeah, no, I, I, the social aspect of it. I tried RDO, but I just, the layout to me doesn't really like. It's not as user friendly, I don't think. Audio, radio, whatever it's called. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You might have some beef with Mark. 
That's Mark's yeah, idea. Yeah, that's too. his thing. No, Sorry, just, Mark. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not like totally partial to RDO. It just it had a student discount at one time, <laughs> and now I have so much shit saved like in my collection that it's like I don't even want to change. <laughs> I get that. It's got though. everything. Yeah, you know, whatever. It's it'd be a big, it'd be an overhaul of moving things over to Spotify. So does anyone here bother with iTunes anymore? Uh, I do sometimes. I I'll listen to stuff. I don't know. When you're feeling miserable. <laughs> that well, it, yeah. So the, I just listen to iTunes. I don't listen to Spotify. So. He has his miserable playlist set up in iTunes, so he just opens Tell that up. Tell love and I'm walking with spiders. Because no, sometimes I have to make MP3s for. Yeah, I, yeah. That's the only time so. I use it too. I, um, that, but, that's the when I use it, and I I end up listening to the the songs that's cool. or whatever. Everyone has but. their own preference, you know. Um. Cool. Well, um, thanks for answering my questions, Melanie. Oh, sure. Thanks for letting me ramble on. You'll probably <laughs> have awesome. to edit out a lot of that. <laughs> but it's gold. It's gold. It's a hit. I can already tell. Um, Sick. Besides, uh, besides that, uh, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about Record Store Day. You guys excited? Who's uh, <laughs> Melanie is going to shoot herself in the head, apparently. Um, but that was a thumbs up. I, I don't know what yeah, you saw yeah, yeah. there, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, anything you guys are uh, looking forward to? Anyone gonna any any record that you guys are looking looking forward to? Um, the Robotic Empire release of all those Nirvana covers yeah. is super super rad. I, I'm not like this is so blasphemous. I'm sorry to anyone who I offend, but I was never like hardcore like Nirvana diehard. Like oh my god, top five favorite bands ever. Like I like them, but I was never like oh my god Nirvana. But I heard nothing, the band Nothing's cover of Something in the Way, and like wanted, it's just so beautiful, just wanted to cry. Like, it's, <laughs> it's so good. It's just so good. So definitely, like, that song alone, that cover would make me, I would totally pick up that release. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones. I haven't heard, I think I've only heard the Nothing song so far, but there was like a lot of Speed song released, mm-hmm. I believe, as well. Um, and Thou and Touche is on there, I think. Yeah, yeah. Touche is on there, yeah. What, uh, anyone else, anyone else looking forward to anything? Caleb, I, I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> is there any movie soundtracks coming out, as, Caleb? As far as I know, Mondo isn't releasing anything. So, okay. right. really, that's a. Uh... They probably are, and I just missed it somehow. Well, yeah. um, are you guys gonna go out? Are you guys gonna go to a store? Yes. I have to go to. I have to go to the Death Wish store. I'm gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Well, some of us will be working. Well, most of us probably will be working all weekend. Um, uh, but I'm definitely gonna hit up Armageddon in uh cambridge must be nice rich. yeah must be nice rich have time to do that <laughs> stop it uh I, i'm so, gonna be at that that brighton music hall uh pop-up uh, oh yeah yeah thing. tell tell yeah. do you uh do you have a little bit more info on that uh well it starts i believe at 10 on saturday yep. morning it's um, 10 to 2 yeah 10 to 2 um yeah pretty much a bunch of labels will be there my label will be there death wish uh, run for cover, um, and I think a few others. And it's so. at the Brighton Music Hall. Yeah. In, yeah. In wait, isn't that in Alston? Yeah, it's in Alston. <laughs> okay, but, so yeah. it's not in Brighton. Uh, so yeah, people should come out and and buy records. Melanie, what's your uh, what's your go to store on the West Coast? There's two. There's Vacation Vinyl in Silver Lake, which is right off Sunset Strip. It's very cool. Uh, I've known Mark, who who is the manager there for a while, and he did. He was super awesome and did um, like an in store for Antichrist Demacorn when that record came out, and let us basically take over the shop, which was super rad. And then Backside Records in Burbank, cool. which is in downtown Burbank, and Jeremy Bohm used to work there. Um, kind of a staple. Like those are those are the main two. That's awesome. Yeah, we work with both those stores, so um, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Caleb, Mark, you guys going anywhere? <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go to. Uh, I'm actually gonna go with my brother. Even though I just moved from Worcester, I'm going back to Worcester on Saturday to go with my brother to a few stores. Uh, place called That's Entertainment and Joe's Albums, and a few Newbury Comics are around there, and also a place called Jelly CDs. Yeah, really cool names. But cool. I'm trying to get that Mac Thaverskin seven inch, but I don't think I'll be able to find. Oh, the it. one on Run for Cover. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So I urge everyone go to a. Go to your local record store and pick up something, you know. Um, 
It only happens once a year, but you can go to a record store whenever you want. But you know, um, uh, go go to uh, go go out this Saturday and pick something up. It uh, it helps small businesses, and uh, you're supporting supporting the scene. Um, yeah, don't go to like Fye or anything. Like go to like a go to like a <laughs> Fye. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Best Buy. I know Caleb's gonna be <laughs> waiting in line at Fye for the like deluxe Taylor Swift CD. So Fye, Suncoast, I'm hitting them all. Catch yes. me at Circuit City. Yeah, strawberries. Throwback. You're probably going to strawberries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you no, know, I got to get, uh, what Best is it? Buy. There'll be a line outside Best Buy. For Yo, circuit. strawberries yeah. is actually really cool. I remember thinking <clears throat> strawberries was so cool when I was a kid. I used to buy all my tickets to the Palladium I to, there. I used to buy yeah, tapes exactly. there. I used to buy tapes. Yeah. Shitty, there you shitty go. tapes. Hell yeah. Uh, what's, uh, now, I know there's some exclusives coming up, but, uh, Anyone have, like, a memorable release from Record Store Day in the past? Anyone have, like, something that they got in the past that was, like, really cool? I know one of my... I, know, I, I didn't get it, but I thought it was really cool um, because there's only 75 made. But do you guys remember the fucked up uh, reel-to-reel that was released on Record Store Day? No. No? It, it was... Um, it was put out by Welfare Records in Haverhill, Massachusetts. And you could only buy it at that store. And there was only 75 made. So... Yeah, I thought it was cool, you know, <laughs> just a cool... That's I, awesome. I, I, I didn't I've know been, that happened. When did, Was that a long time ago? Uh, actually, I have the info up here. I don't know when it was. Uh, 2011, possibly? Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. So, yeah, that was a pretty cool one. Any any other ones that you guys have gotten in the past on Record Store Day? I'm trying to think. I don't, I chirp, don't know. Chirp, chirp. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. <laughs> well, that ends our record store day talk. <laughs> so yeah, again, go uh, just go buy a record. People uh, buy anything, buy something cool. It's just cool to be like, you know, experiencing it too. Like even if you don't set out to find something specific, yeah. like just being out there and everyone's all super stoked and it's you know. Small I get psyched business just thinking and- about being in a public place where everyone else is just as psyched <laughs> about buying music as I am. Where normally it's exactly. like not the same everyone's like yeah i want to buy music today it's really cool yeah yeah it doesn't happen too often so yeah go support it go buy something um cool well you guys know what time it is i don't know what time it is it's um cool new tunes and melanie's gonna sing the intro this time (laughs) (laughs) no 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 she's not (laughs) (laughs) mark bring it the fuck in i want it hard (laughs) bring it in Through my headphones through the wall. <laughs> yep, Fuck those yeah. just broke. It was really loud. <laughs> there it is. Oh my god, I'm so glad I got to hear that untouched and unauto tune. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's what are you the, talking uh, about? I don't, oh, I don't auto tune Mark. That's his natural That's what he sounds like. <laughs> pitch. Those uh, three seconds that I just did that uh, that <laughs> vocal present to all you guys. That was my MTV <laughs> unplugged. <laughs> I want that for uh, record store day. Yeah, yeah let's tell press us about it. the cool new tunes. Sure thing. So I just I wanna right off the bat, we put up pre orders for Super Heaven's new LP this week. Um ours is Chrome. Side one dummy is uh helping us out with that. So we're we're doing a pre order for the Grimace Purple variant of the LP, and that comes with a poster featuring the album artwork on one side, it's double sided, the other side is a picture of the band. 11 and by 17 poster 11 11 by 17 just so like if you've ever gotten yo those are our, some good dimensions yeah solid <laughs> dimensions they're the same that we use for our posters <laughs> cool what did i miss something <laughs> <laughs> not just those are just like the best dimensions dude i love that's my favorite it's good, poster it's, size it's a good size <laughs> so yeah we also put the cd version up for pre-order too so that's there um <laughs> some of you might um have already seen this the distro title of the week this week was sleep volume one um so yeah that's i believe their uh first release it's before dope smoker it's uh it sounds a little bit different but um if you like sleep you should definitely check it out um i don't think there's too many left though but uh act fast going quick oh, um, sound like hotcakes distro title of the week is just straight fire every time yeah. <laughs> who's who's doing it i wonder um Some dork <laughs> uh so we also got some 
very cool demo tapes I'm excited about uh, from this quasi-local band. They're from Providence. So uh, V-Sect, friends of mine, just went on tour with Fucking Invincible and Drop Dead. And I picked up some of their demo tapes from them that are left over. So I think at the moment we're the only place who has them available because they're all out. So definitely check them out. They are so good. And the kids are into it. They are. They are. Um, This kid's into it. (laughs) Okay. Last but but last. So (laughs) I hate Rich. Um, (laughs) So we also just got a bunch of Youth Attack releases in. Um, So like some stuff we haven't had in the store before and a bunch of restocks. So, um, failures LP, the new one, decline and fall, um, arts, Taylor bow, ancestors, civilized, and so much more. Cool. So and, uh, youth out. attack is exclusively distributed by us now. So, yes. uh, that's which direct. So go, uh, if you're, uh, if you are a buyer or you go to a store, you can tell them that they can grab records from us now. So, Glad to have them aboard. Yeah, um, welcome to you, the team. Uh, <laughs> yeah, welcome to the family. Um, again, so like the two scroll downs on our, or the drop downs on our sites, if you go to the one on the right for distro and go all the way to the bottom, it's alphabetical, sorry, Youth Attack. Um, it's the very last one. You click that and everything's there for you. So, Very cool. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the next uh, the next segment, film school with Rich, our favorite segment. Film school, film school. excellent, time. excellent. Swing, <laughs> <laughs> party on, kill. Party on. So, uh, we, I think we have to explain this one more time because it's been a little bit since we explained it, and probably people are like, "Why are they talking about these random movies?" But um, Why is a record label talking about yeah. movies? Uh, Caleb found out quickly that I don't watch movies. Because I never got what he was ever talking about. And he has all these like posters on the wall. And I'm just like, what the hell is that? And he's like, that's, that's fucking Evil Dead, you idiot. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what that is. All right. But so Caleb's having me go back and watch the classics. What he considers the classics. Yeah, it's... I'm sure a lot of people would argue with some of my choices. Yeah, but some people whatever. have already said that your choices have been wet. Oh, yeah? What people? You? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Some people have said that. Uh, last week I watched... Um, what I watched? Oh, my fucking... <laughs> Indiana, Indiana, Jones. Indiana Jones. Yeah. I watched... Oh, sorry. Yeah, the, for the pot... We, we, we did... We reviewed... La- I, I reviewed Raiders of the, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, and I didn't like it. So, go ahead. Send your hate mail. I don't care. Um, yeah, real real quick, Melanie, have you seen Raiders of the Lost Ark? Oh, I have seen Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders of the Lost Ark was one of those movies like when you're homesick as a kid and you just need something to watch for comfort. And exactly. It's just like, oh, yeah. you just throw that on, and it just it just broke my heart that you didn't like yeah. that. I just couldn't. I, Rich I obviously just, didn't have a childhood. Perplexed, clearly. I didn't watch cartoons what as a kid. What the fuck? So. <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot. A lot actually. Um, no childhood, like, just how. Tr- yeah, I know. I know. I've told people this. I didn't have a bike. I didn't have a bike either. And people were like, "Oh, it explains a lot." What did you do as a kid? Coding? You just coded on the computer? <laughs> like, what do you do? Well, as a kid? Melanie, you if you, <laughs> we'll talk about my uh, childhood in, a, in, a, in another episode. But okay. uh, I, I was running DOS hard in the nineties. Okay. Oh shit! Rich was born at Deathwish. <laughs> 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 um. <laughs> Yes, but this this uh, this past week I watched Boogie Nights, um, and just to give you guys a little uh, background on Boogie Nights, uh, it's a movie about a gifted adult <laughs> film star named Dirk Diggler, uh, and his uh, his real name's Eddie. Come on, man. Yeah, well, that's his name, and like the that's his like porn star name. Isn't that the best porn star name ever? It's a good one. Yeah, yeah. And real quick, I just want to point out, Melanie, you watched it, right? Uh, I intended to. I've actually never seen it, and I have not seen it yet. Oh, I was going to say it was, it was going to be a podcast first. I think everyone had watched it this week. No, I'm so sorry. It's okay, <laughs> Melanie. You didn't miss much. Don't sweat it. <laughs> you didn't miss much at all. 
So you didn't like um, it? <laughs> oh, I guess we're going well, straight into it, Rich. Yeah, we're going to go straight into it. I, I made some notes. I made. I some figured. Notes. I figured this one would freak you out a bit. No, it didn't really freak me out, but um, so I think towards the beginning of the movie, uh, Burt Reynolds shows up. Yep. And I always confuse Burt Reynolds with Tom Selleck and vice versa. <laughs> do you guys ever do that? Easy no, mistake. That's, that's, yeah, that's totally passable. That's okay. That, and I'm like, oh, Tom Selleck's in this movie. And my girlfriend was watching with me at the time. And she's like, that's Burt Reynolds. And I was like, oh, same thing. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I confused that right off the bat. Um, as far as the actors go, uh, there was some really good acting, obviously. Uh, John C. Riley was great in the movie. Very mm-hmm. funny. He had the most, like, he made me laugh the most in, in the movie. Han Solo? <laughs> what? Remember when he said he looks like Han Solo? It's okay. You, you didn't, no. Uh, I don't remember that part. I mean, Rich, did you watch the movie? I did, I did, but I don't remember that part. I mean, part. We, we, us um, three just watched it last night, so like, it's pretty fresh in our minds. Yeah. But. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys all watched yeah. it together last night. Um, and William H., William H. Macy was really good in the movie. I thought he was... He was funny and really. Did good. you like Philip Seymour Hoffman's character, Scotty? Oh yes, him? yes, yes. He was awesome. Scotty's my favorite. I love him. Yes, he was. He was. He was. He was really funny. Um, Those tight clothes. I feel is is William H Macy like typecasted? Is he to play the same role in every movie? Oh, without a doubt, he's typecasted. Okay. Yeah, because obviously I haven't seen a lot of movies, and I, he just seemed like the same character that he played in Fargo. Yep, the lovable loser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, uh, look, the movie was very predictable. Oh, what are you talking about? Well, what did you, you predict? Know, it was just, <laughs> what did it you just predict? like, okay, the guy has it all. Spoiler alert, everyone, spoiler alert. Um, we don't do spoilers on here. We, or we don't do spoiler alerts. We just spoil everything. <laughs> it was just like, he, all right, he had it all. He, you know, became the, he became number one porn star or whatever. If that's a title, he won that. He won some awards, you know, and then he lost it all because of, like, you know, drugs and, you know, being an idiot. Okay, that's a prediction? What are you talking about? <laughs> it's just very predictable. I thought the, 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 the whole thing that's was That's not very a prediction. Predictable. That's just, like, a broad generalization. And that's what it was, right? And I just totally slurred gen- <laughs> Yes, that's what happens in the movie. You didn't Rich, predict that's anything, like saying, though. That's like saying that like uh, Indiana Jones was predictable because you thought that he would save the day at the end. You know what I mean? It's like, why okay. are you... There's like specific... I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just making a point, I guess. I'm just saying that uh, this, right. the movie was very predictable. Not saying that it was bad, cool. but uh, it was very predictable. Is that okay? Is that okay to say, Mark? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> Not right, okay, well. but we can move on. <laughs> was it predictable like part- when Mark, when the fucking dudes in the pickup truck showed up and beat the shit out of him on the sidewalk? Yeah, Did you I predict knew that, that was gonna happen. I Wait, told you like something was gonna okay. happen there. That, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Did he, you predict no, 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 when guys, that dude guys, knew her from guys, high school? Guys, guys, he knew something was gonna Obviously, happen. Obviously, like prediction. <laughs> <laughs> guys, this is film school with Rich. Okay, your name isn't in the segment. All right, yeah, I'll shut up. <laughs> but uh, d- what what I the part that I found really funny was when John C. Riley and uh, Mark Wahlberg were in the recording studio. Oh, so good. That was that, awesome. was, that was really funny. That was really good. Would you? Would um, you... Oh, sorry, go sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say just that reminded me of something. What did you think of like the period piece, um, like trailers for the porn movies? So, like, starting in the 70s and then going to the 80s. Because that reminds me, like, you know, those two with their recording. That reminds you of your collection? <laughs> what? Oh, my porn collection? No. <laughs> 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 yes, I have, a lot oh. of, I have a lot of porn VHSs lying around at home. Um, I, used, I used to work with a guy um, at the grocery store who said he owned over 300 pornography D, uh, VHSs. Wow. That's a good he, guy to surround your life he with. He collected them. I did them. <laughs> and he didn't invite you over to watch any? I wasn't going near that. It, it would have been like things. the truck scene. But <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good joke? <laughs> cool. 
Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it was until you asked. <laughs> was that a good joke? It's me, MC Miserable Chris. <laughs> I'm just gonna jump out my window here. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> Caleb, do you have anything else to say about this movie? Because I don't really have much to say about it, to be honest. Are what? Did you like it? I, look, thumbs I up or thumbs the, down? I I liked the movie. Um, I thought it was I thought it was good. Um, wasn't one of my favorites. How about that? That I, uh, so far, it was probably toward the bottom. Okay, you like you liked it more than Indiana Jones. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Indiana Jones is a bad movie. Oh, oh. yeah. You, God. you gotta stop with that. <laughs> I feel like you need to watch something that's no, notoriously bad so that you have a frame of reference like, okay, I guess Indiana Jones wasn't that bad. Because like, if you, don't, if you haven't seen anything, I'm just, I'm just dying inside right now. Indiana Jones. Rich. Melanie, I've, on, I've only seen classic movies like Independence Day. <laughs> um, that's a, see, that's the only movie. He's seen something that's notoriously bad, and it's his favorite movie. The Hunger Games, but only what's on Netflix. <laughs> the Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> oh Melanie, yeah, the I, Hunger Games. That's yeah, a classic that. one too. You love that shit. Oh Into my god. What? One of my favorites. Melody, there's, there's straight up. There's an episode where we talk about what we're interested in at the end, and Rich talks for ten minutes about he's so excited for the new Hunger Games. He hasn't even seen it yet. But he won't watch it until it goes on to Netflix a year yeah. from now. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna go to the I movies. Mean, what am I gonna do? Go to the movies? <laughs> why not? So because he, he's one know. Hunger Game behind at all time. There I isn't a movie theater stuff. in Waltham, so we won't go to the movies. <laughs> but anyways, anyways, uh, the movie was it was good. Go yeah, go see it. It's 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 okay. You. <laughs> oh sure. my god. I, I can I give it a thumbs in the middle. Just sure. Like this, those... yeah. Teetering. Yeah. Caleb, you really like this movie, don't you? Yeah, it's great. I love this director. This is one of his best. This is one of his. I think this is his second movie. Oh, he like the director. By the way, he he wrote this movie too, right? Yep. Yeah, and I it was believe he writes movie, all of his movies. Can I? I think I looked this up. I mean, I did look this up, but I think did I get this straight that the movie is about a fake story, which is about a real person. He based it off a short film that he uh, wrote and directed previous to this, and then he just expanded it oh okay it's okay. loosely so he wrote the one, okay it's loosely based off of john holmes who's a famous porn star for having a very big dick <laughs> so <laughs> so it's loosely based off of him yeah so <laughs> yeah. anyways <laughs> no, that's cool i there was just some okay. silence there i don't like, know it was uncomfortable oh um, and Caleb, what we f- totally forgot to mention the sponsor of this segment. Well, we're not done yet. You're done with this. I'm done <laughs> with it. I don't want to even talk about it anymore. It's it's probably for the best because you guys talked about um, what was it, Fargo or Indiana Jones for like 45 minutes. No, we talked about ago. Taxi Driver. Oh, Taxi Driver. See, Taxi Driver. That's a good movie. Yes, it is. Caleb. Did, uh, well, I don't. I don't feel else? like sponsoring it this week after Chris, after this Chris debacle. And Mark, did you guys like? I the thought movie? it was great. I, yeah, I did. It was a really good movie. I was taking okay. pictures of their reactions. They yeah, were it's, freaking. It's out. a stressful movie. It was great. <laughs> like, I don't know. Did uh, Chris pause the last scene? Right, screenshot yeah, yeah. of it. I got a video of them. They were drooling. Actually, we, we okay. didn't even like react to that part because we were so stressed out we were like <laughs> you guys, the other stuff that happened you, you guys just all walked out and didn't say anything to each other <laughs> <laughs> well um yeah so yeah go see it sure I don't care <laughs> do what you want wow Rich uh, can you pretend to at least Caleb like- before we before we announce the uh the next movie that you're gonna have me see um I'm gonna tell everyone that Film School with Rich is brought to you by Caleb Gowett and the Death Wish Store. No, I'm not sponsoring it this week because I'm not happy with you. Your sponsors are angry. Use the code ROLLERGIRL and get 10% off your next order. You can buy some Death Wish stuff. You can buy some Melotov stuff. Get 10% off. Why not, right? 
So yeah, go use that. 10% off with Roller Girl. One word. Um, Caleb, what am I watching next time? Rambo, First Blood. Oh, I'm, I'm oh, actually very shit. interested to see this. See that, see that movie. What do you um, have? You heard? What do you know? You know Rambo, obviously. I've never seen it before. Um, but you, you've heard of it. What do you think about it? Well, I know that they reference it in that other movie. Um, is it Hot Shots with Charlie Sheen? <laughs> yes, it is. There's a reference to that. I've seen that movie. Uh, yeah, that's good. So uh, <laughs> that movie will make yeah. a little bit more sense now. Yeah, um, I'm I'm interested to see that then. But I've never seen Rambo. When was Rambo? When did Rambo originally come out? Uh, 80s? You just called me out. I want to say late 70s. I'm not okay. positive. Okay, cool. Well, I'll watch that. Caleb, your last two weeks of picks have really let me down. <laughs> yeah, your performance on this week's podcast has oh, let me shit. down. Oh, oh my god. Calling you out. I don't care. Damn. I don't I care. Rich is doing a fine job. He just didn't like the movie. Yeah, I mean, uh, I he's not like telling everything. us why though. I just he doesn't like the movie because pre- it's predictable. I, I, he didn't I predict think he, anything. He's just embarrassed because there was a lot of sex in the movie. He's just pretending that he doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Made me uncomfortable. <laughs> Did it? That would be a legitimate reason. No, it didn't. It didn't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just cut myself. All right, uh, miserable Chris. Yes. <laughs> Tell us about <laughs> so good. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> it's time for tour time. Yeah, bring Mark, us in. Bring us in. Is there like a re- is there a thing for this? What? No, they you the always want sing it live. It. No, I uh, is it. Tour <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Yeah, that was That's it. it. Cool. I, I think that was the best. Thing. I'm. I usually. I, I put all of my mental space all like on cool new tunes. That's like my drive and my desire and my focus and my that's, passion. Well, so well, that's the hit. Yeah, that's the hit. This is the B side. You know, it's like whatever. Continue. Sorry. Go ahead, Chris. Cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh, so uh, Code Orange uh, will be playing with uh, Slayer uh, this year at Mayhem Festival. Uh, that starts June 26th through August 2nd. And uh, Doom Riders will be playing with Slayer as well, uh, but at Sinclair in Cambridge. I don't even know. I don't even know how Slayer is playing to Sinclair. Yeah, it's nuts. That's going to be wild. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, that got announced today, I believe. So Yeah. Like, and just uh, to let people know that not, I think like the Sinclair is like a 500 cap room, I think. Yeah. It's, it's not a, a, a big venue. Um, no, no, not, not so. something that Slayer would typically play, but that's going to be awesome. And yeah. the fact uh, that Doom Riders is playing is crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. It's nuts. Like two of our bands will be playing with Slayer. Uh, that's awesome. So crazy. Yeah, so, so crazy. So that happens on April uh, 29th. Uh, tickets go on sale April 20th. Uh, those tickets are available at converse-music.com slash Boston. Uh, Self-Defense Family will be playing Weekender Fest with the Smith Street Band, Modern Baseball, and a ton more on uh, sep- September 4th, 5th, and 6th in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, Cult Leader will be playing Southwest Terror Fest uh, this fall, starting October 15th through the 18th. Uh, Young and in the Way will be touring with Take and uh, Wolfhammer this summer, starting June 21st through the 27th. For more tour info and updates, please visit deathwishinc.com slash tours. Very so, cool. So there's like awesome. some stuff yeah, happening. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff that got announced this week, so it should be cool. Very cool. Very cool. Melanie, do you have like any, 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 I know you did some in the news, but did you want to drop any tour stuff here? Um, nothing that's been a hundred percent solidified, but summer will be very busy for metal top bands and, uh, a lot of West coast presence over in the East coast in September. And I'll unravel that a little bit in the weeks to come. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't announce it yet, but, uh, you know, check it out. Go to, uh, Go to Melatov's website, 
check that out. We'll put it all in the show notes too. So if you guys want to check it out, you can do that. Um, cool. It's time for uh, questions too. So once again, you can use the hashtag AskDeathTalk on Twitter. We have email, deathtalk at deathwishing.com. And we did get our first call. So we're going to play that too. Um, uh, you can call the Death Talk hotline at 754-70-DETALK. So 754-70-8255. And leave us a message. You can be brief. Uh, just call it. It'll go to voicemail and uh, just leave a small message, question, anything you want. Um, maybe you can do your impression of, um, Mark doing the, uh, cool new tunes intro. Fuck yeah. Hey, um, you missed a three, so <laughs> you should just say the number again, or you, I'll say the number again. You just Sorry, left did out I say seven, five, four, seven, zero, three, eight, two, five, five. There you go. Sorry. There you go. Yeah. Call it then. Give it a call. It'll be in the show notes, it's, too. It's ringing off the hook. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, first one from Twitter. Michael Beers. At Beers C8S wants to know, what do you see as the role of record labels? And says, best podcast ever. I think he means maybe, like, in the future. Like, what do we see? Like, how are, how are labels going to uh, evolve with the changing times? They're just um, going to turn into podcasts. Yeah, we're just gonna all do yeah, podcasts. We're just gonna put a podcast. <laughs> That'd be sick. <laughs> we'll be a full time podcast uh, company. So uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a, there's a lot of uh, people that say like you don't need the labels anymore because you know artists can just do all of it on their own. Um, and maybe you don't need a label in a traditional sense to do things because um, anyone can put their record on iTunes. Anyone can put out their own record. Anyone can sell their own record and pay for their own recording and do things like that. But um, a lot of the times it's, it's the uh, knowledge, having the knowledge to do these things uh, and having the connections and having the, uh, the set in- infrastructure to put out a record properly. Um, I don't think that's ever going to go away. There's always going to be someone that you need to, you know, get the <laughs> records out to stores. And, you know, most of the times, you know, bands can't do that on their own they need some sort of help whether it's a distributor or a label or things like that but uh melanie any uh you you have a record label i heard i heard you have a record label yeah that's true that actually rumors are true um i <laughs> yeah. do run a record label no i agree i mean like everyone says well you know the artists could do it themselves whether you distribute it digitally or you put out the record <clears throat> excuse me yourself but it's like okay well i can open a restaurant myself and i i know how to cook so i can cook but i can also make the menu and i can also wait on the people and i can also you know go to networking ve- events to promote the restaurant like all these different things like yes we're all capable of doing but labels have the time and usually uh, the means more so than the artist. Like if you're out touring, how are you going to stay in contact or make sure something gets shipped out to a distributor like X, Y, and Z. So it's like labels are there as leverage to, you know, make this well-oiled machine run as smoothly as possible. Know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. totally. Plus, I like, just uh, wanted to add, sorry, go ahead, re- go ahead. real quick. I just wanted to add like, also like, you go to certain labels because you know, like you know what kind of stuff they're gonna put out, or you trust their opinion, and you're yeah. you, like you'll give stuff a, more of a chance that way. You're like, oh, I like this label; they put out this new thing I haven't heard of. You're gonna give it more of a chance because you trust that label and their um, their opinion on music and like what they choose to put out is. I more think long. there's. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, it's fine. I was just saying, I think as like, continuing like what you're saying, there's definitely some, something to be said about like, for instance, uh, like someone picks up a like a Death Heaven record and they see Death Wish on the back and they're like, what's that? And they Google it and then there's literally hundreds of albums they can discover through that. So I think there's something to be said about the grouping of all of it in one thing to make people be able to figure find out about other stuff. I'm sure. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? No, exactly. Well, yeah. Now more than ever, like growing up, finding a band, I didn't care what label put it out. Like it was just like exactly, yeah. the way of discovering it. But then now more than ever, I think even if you aren't involved with running a label, like people are like, oh yeah, like, you know, 
Death Witch put that out or 6131 put that out or like they're on Melotov. That's dope. Like even people who don't even know that aspect of it are paying attention to the labels that release it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I've, uh, I, and I, I think I, I agree. Like, uh, the labels have almost been tastemakers. Like, uh, they have this sort of sound and you can relate to those, uh, uh, opinions or, or, you know, you can relate to what, uh, what labels like and uh like uh, mark can agree with me too like i've been on a 4ad kick for the past like yeah i don't know <laughs> few months like everything they've been putting out has been awesome and uh yeah. mark too uh and it's like i've given records a chance on that label that maybe i wouldn't have in the past uh, because Absolutely. i've like probably the last three records that they put out a lot so yeah um so yeah i agree um you know, it's going to change. It's never, you know, it's not the same. It's not the same that it was five years ago. Labels aren't doing the same stuff. We're doing, we're doing, we're doing podcasts right now. <laughs> you know, not a lot of labels. We're doing podcasts. We've actually been doing a podcast for a long time. Well, not us, but we've done death, death casts in the past uh, for a pretty long time. We were kind of, I don't want to say the first, but we we're definitely ahead of the curve uh, as far as doing those. But, um, uh, yeah, so I think it's going to change, and I think they'll be around. And it's it, when you hear when you hear bands like come out and say that uh, we don't need to let labels anymore. It's 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 a select few that can actually say that. Well, you can say that because you can invest money into your new project because you've right. already made your money off your previous records that have come out on record labels and that record labels that have helped you get to where you are. Um, so. Uh, We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I think the, the role's going to change. It's always going to change. It's, it's never going to be the same. So, cool. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Michael Beers. I like your last name, too. Because I like <laughs> beer. He probably uh, gets that all the time. Rich, yeah. Rich yeah, just yeah, got yeah. Snapchat, and he's just snapping me pics of him with beers bigger than the side of his head in the middle of the night. That was a good snap. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Dog. Uh, we got an email too from uh, Rick Bros. <laughs> is that how you say it? Bros. Yeah, Bros. 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 Uh, this is a long one, so I'm not. I'm, but thank you, thank you. For, uh, we love emails, and when we get these, it's really cool. This email um, is so good. It's a really good email. Um, I'm not going to read it all, but I'm. I'm I'll, we'll talk about a couple of the points that he brings up. Um, so this is from Rick. Uh, I had a few comments in regards to your discussion about streaming services, especially the social aspects of audio. I think it was shortchanged in the conversation, and this was probably me talking. <laughs> this is me talking shit about audio. No, it was actually me. Someone who used it. I, I just don't. Oh, really okay. use, right. I don't use the social aspect of it, and I really didn't say much. And I think he's correcting me. This is okay, coming yeah, from so, the guy who's not on Facebook either, or Instagram, yeah. or you know. So Rick says, I've, I used uh, RDO for a long period of time in the past and was drawn to it by the social aspects. You can follow people on the service and see what they're currently listening to. So he's basically saying like that it has some of the aspects of Spotify that we were talking about too. So that's really cool. And, w and this one, this part of the email that I really like is, in regards to Rich not enjoying Indiana Jones, I don't think it's that surprising. What do you guys think about that? He's we not obviously surprised. all disagree. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> um, bum, 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 so yeah, it was really long. It was, it was a few other things that he mentioned too. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but um, uh, Rick has a podcast too, so I'll, I'll do a little shout out here. So thank you for writing the email. So um, he says he's been uh, doing one for the past several months, and uh, it's uh, loose back at pulp culture from the past. So it's uh, the past cast, thepastcast.com. Give that a listen. Check it out. I haven't checked it out yet, but I'm going to. What about uh, Greg's voicemail? Yeah, so I, I want to leave that for the end here. Uh, oh, okay, we okay. finally got a voicemail, <laughs> so I'm really excited about that. Uh, and Shout out this to Greg is, Cabral. Uh, this you're from our, our friend our Greg. Favorite. Yeah, from yeah. Our Greg from our friend Greg in New York. I'll play it for you now. Hey guys, this is Greg Cabral. My question is: Can you guys name your all-time top five records? Thank you. All right, Greg. Greg wants to know our top five albums of all time. Oh, Can we do this quick? Maybe, maybe only do three. I'm gonna name mine right now. This isn't like in order, but uh, 
It just was what, and this cha- like this changes for me like all the time. Yeah, me too. Like like next week I'll probably say something different. Uh, but right now, right now, saves the day through being cool. Uh, Metallica, Ride the Lightning, American Nightmare, self titled, Glass Jaws, everything you ever wanted to know about Silence, and Modern Life is War, Witness. In no particular order. Those are my top five. Solid. Does someone want to go next? I'm still thinking. I didn't prepare for this. So. This You'll have to like, do five. I'm Melody, not going to be prepared. It, I'm just going to try to think about it. This gives me like deep anxiety because I'll, lis- you know, I'll listen to it tomorrow and be like, oh, crap, I forgot to say X, Y, and Z. <laughs> um, I know for sure like the defining record that got me more like off the beaten path of punk and metal because i was metalhead before it got into like hardcore and everything um well, it's two records it's ceremony violence violence and converge you fail me those two like took me from this path to that path you know but in terms of cool. all-time favorite record, that would i just it would you'd have to think of that have to be like a uh you have to write like a like an essay about that oh absolutely like break it down absolutely <laughs> um anyone else want to name a couple purple rain really <laughs> yeah of course oh some people really like that record i'm yeah, not a no, prince fan because it's dope okay uh, chris 98 degrees you told me you like that record <laughs> a lot yeah holy yeah, shit it's awesome it's a great record <laughs> Spice World. is that the is that the one did jessica simpson marry that guy from from nick lachey degrees? Yeah. Is that him? Is that the same one? All right, cool. Yeah, you like Jessica Simpson too, right, Chris? Yeah, it's my top record is that. It's okay. So Chris's is 98 Degrees, out. Jessica Simpson, and yeah. uh, Avril Puddle Week. of Mud. And Puddle of Mud. Pu- Puddle of Mud, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's cool. So good. <laughs> Love that's that good. butt well, rock. <laughs> I, th- I think that, I think that's all we got for top albums. That's, that's always a tough one. People always ask that, but uh, I yeah, figured I, we'd, a- we'd answer I lo- it once. I love Greg, but I hate that question. <laughs> so, but thank you, Greg, for calling in. And more people should call in. I think you can. Uh, you, you definitely want to hear your voice. I mean, at least thirteen people have listened to this podcast before, so <laughs> you'll be able to hear. They'll be able to hear your voice. So, uh, cool. So once again. Uh, if you want to ask questions, use uh, hashtag AskDeathTalk on Twitter. Uh, email DeathTalk at DeathWishing.com or call the Death Talk hotline, 754-703-8255. There should be a jingle to that song. Mark, work on it for next episode. Yeah, Mark. Uh, I'll try my best. Definitely put something together. <laughs> All right. What we're into. Let's do what we're into. That's always fun. Caleb, I heard you're into some things. I'm into, <laughs> Yes. I'm always into... Actually, there's so many things I'm into this week. Um, Daredevil, Netflix series. Been watching that. Oh, I heard good things about that. Yeah. I mean, I love it because it's Marvel, so I just like it right off the bat because I'm a fanboy. It's kind of more edgy, right? It's not like a definitely, typical Marvel. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. It's the street level characters get the Netflix treatment, and it's awesome. It's a lot grittier, a lot more violent. I don't know. Some of the acting's like kind of spotty. I'm not going to lie, but... I like it a okay. lot. Uh, I'm also really into ice cream. You put in the show notes getting getting creamed. Getting creamed, dude. Springs in the air. You gotta you gotta go get cream. That's All what right. that means on the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> He yeah. says it all the time in the office. Our, our new yeah, like yells it. Our our spot, our office spot, finally opened up. So. Dick and Junes. Dick and Beverly. Junes. Yep. So yeah, we Go went two days in a row to them. Get creamed at Dick and Junes. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna go now. Um, I went bowling over the weekend, and I suck at the big ball bowling. So fuck that. Candle pin bowling's where it's at. Do you use the bumpers? No, I don't use the bumpers, asshole. <laughs> what do you think I am? You just said you sucked at it. I suck. I, I was real bad. But candle pin, I'll, I'm, I'm good at that shit. So much fun. 
Melanie, you guys got candle pin bowling on the West Coast? I don't even know what that is. Do you know, uh. like, well, like, I'm sure your bowling alleys have, like, the larger balls with the, the finger grips, right? Like a regular bowling ball? <laughs> well, no, that's irregular here. That's not a regular b- bowling ball. There, To be but, fair, there are more regular bowling yeah, alleys in Massachusetts than candle pin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, like, a, a candle pin ball fits in your palm. It's, this, it's like, this big. I'm... I'm showing her on the Google Hangout. Yeah, it's, it's like a podcast, it's like, though. Yeah, it's probably like uh, it's not as big as like a like a regular, you know, uh, like a basketball, but it's it's like more of like a baseball size, a little bit bigger than a baseball. Okay, okay. No, so I, I mean we probably do have that, but I'm, I'm not familiar. Dude, it's all the rage in Boston. Brick Everyone oven pizza candle pin and candle pin bowling. Yeah, they go hand in hand. If you're ever out here, we'll go candle pin bowling. I want to get creamed and uh, do some candle pin bowling. So, all are within walking distance. Yeah, there's a bowling alley across the street. It's not candle pin though. Yeah, it is. Is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, it's not. That's why Garvey's so good. We went last time and it wasn't candle pin. Caleb, it was. It's okay. It's candle pin. It's right across the street. Do you throw it? Instead of like rolling it, do you throw it? No, you still roll it. No, you still roll it. The the pins are a little bit smaller too. Yeah, They're, sounds tight. It, it's awesome. So, what are you into, <laughs> Melanie? Uh, well, I'm definitely going to YouTube candle pin bowling after this. Look and it up. We used to watch. I, well, at least I used to watch it on Saturday mornings. Like it used to be my thing. Like ESPN two candle pin bowling. <laughs> no, not even brackets. that. This would be like local, like PBS. It would be like you know, it'd be like. <laughs> Rich, you're you know, further proving uh, all of our points. You didn't you know, have you a bike. A you didn't watch dicks. cartoons. You woke up on Saturday mornings to watch bowling. <laughs> yeah, which is sick. candle pin bowling for middle aged men is just a reason to not hang out with their wives. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> Spe- <laughs> Speaking of which, Rich, when uh, when's the wedding? You set a date yet? No, no, still haven't done that. Gotta get, just get let me gotta know. get on that. I'll just just I'll clear my schedule. I know I'm gonna be the wedding band. So, <laughs> Mark, I'm I'm I don't even know if you're invited. That's okay, Rich. You told me I was the best man. I didn't. Ne- I never said that. <laughs> Megan told Ever. me. No. That's not happening. <laughs> You're embarrassing. Um, <laughs> uh, Melanie, what, what, what are you into lately? Um, uh, well, I love the new ceremony songs. Uh, the Separation into it as well. and... What's that? I said I'm into it as well. Really oh good songs. God. It's so good. It's uh, heavy Interpol vibes. And like what I love about ceremony is that they've just it's so punk for them to do something that's like not what they've been known for for years you know like the yep. power of violence or whatever kind of genre you want to attach to it and now like to this I, i'm just so floored by it i love it and then um joey from the banner has like this super industrial like minimalist goth type deal going on um the new record that y'all just got in the distro like the, there's two songs off of it sunlight and send me down he's doing like his own solo project called Rites of Blood, which like are more that style of, of music. It's really good. Um, if you're into industrial goth, minimalist, feeling sad type stuff. And then, Oh, Chris will you know, it. Yeah. It sounds like something I'd be into. Yeah. The miserable Chris project is a new record. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> guys, that new Coliseum, that's just going to be a straight jammer. I love that shit. It's a good one. It's so good. It's awesome. It's a those, good one. Those three new songs that are the songs that have been released so far. I can't stop listening to that. Super good. It's awesome. That's another band uh, that's yeah. kind of like going out of their comfort zone as far as like style goes. Oh, for sure. And it's working, working very well. Into it. Into it. Chris. Super into it. What are you, uh, what are you doing these days? Uh, binge watching <laughs> Hannibal. That's, what did you say? That's what I've been uh, just binge watching Hannibal uh, or, TV series. Dude, you're a Netflix that's, freak. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I do. You dude, know, you I'm stream hard. You stream harder Netflix. than Mark. I do. Wow. Um, you sure about that? I stream pretty hard. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's true. He streams on his lunch break in in the break room. Oh, you were streaming? 
Yeah, dude, watching yeah. fucking Bob's Burgers eating a sandwich. Chromecast, <laughs> baby. Yeah, it was it was awesome. Yeah, I feel that. Cool. But cool. Uh, Mark, what are you into besides streaming? Uh, not much else. Uh, just kidding. Uh, I guess I'm into. I didn't write this down ahead of time. I guess I'm into Beverly, Massachusetts. I'm psyched yeah. about living here. I just moved here like four days ago, and I'm psyched about all the shit that's around. Even though I've been working here for a while, I haven't really explored, and it's a really cool town. And Salem's cool. It's right next to it. So I'm pretty excited to be living here. Awesome. Mark, awesome. I'm I'm already a fan of a place called Waffle House H A U Z Z. I he haven't hasn't even gone there. Yet. I haven't been there yet, but I already like have bought the T-shirt and like telling everyone about going there and like it's gonna be I your just, late night spot, right? Yeah, dude. I'm trying to go at like 1 a.m. Just like get some ice cream on a waffle and just like sit there and just like you know think about life. <laughs> dude, I hear 1 a.m. waffles are better than 9 a.m. waffles. I hope so. I'm gonna try both. I can't believe no one mentioned this, but have, did everyone watch Game of Thrones? Yep. No. No. Game of Thrones, Silicon Valley, yeah, Daredevil. It. Yeah. It's a good Hannibal. One. Did apparently. you guys watch the? Anyone watch like the leaked episodes of Game of Thrones? Nah, nah. I'm not watched. I dude, standard definition? No way. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. Give me 1080p or give me death. God. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> and you called me a geek earlier. Yeah, no way. I'm not watching that standard definition shit. I can't even watch. Like, if like uh, my my girlfriend will be like, I'll, I'll walk in. She's like watching like Channel Seven and Standard Definition. I'd be like, What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Switch to HD immediately. <laughs> what do we pay this extra ten dollars a month for? Right. If we're not going to stream a stream <laughs> we're not gonna watch hd Ch- channel 7 coverage of getting whatever <laughs> That's yeah. I yeah i want that news in hd if we're gonna watch it <laughs> no way am i watching that in standard definition all right well that's it sorry guys we have to end this can i make an, uh, an extra credit movie request yes for please you? Um, Caleb, I don't even know, this is kind of, this came onto my radar like a few years ago, and I guess there's like some crazy cult following, but Tommy Wusso's The Room, have any of you guys seen that? <laughs> yes, no. many okay. times. Okay, I love it, yeah, no, I, yeah. Um, it's, he's gonna hate it. Exactly, because. He's not gonna like But it. I feel like <laughs> it's gonna give a good frame of reference of like, how much better everything else will be after you watch that. But it's great. I don't That's, know, Rich. That I, would I be think a good you, one. Yeah. All right, Rich, well, I think you have to watch two this week, then. I don't know. I can't watch two movies in two weeks. The Room is yeah, short. No, you're just it's really so short. Busy. <laughs> I think The Room will All just right. really confuse him. I just don't think he'll understand anything. Part of the you extra guys. credit, I guess? I mean, you're just going to have to right. experience it for yourself, I think. You, you'll probably okay. like it, actually. Right. You'll hate it. Fine. You'll hate it, and Fine. I'm so excited to hear it. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's it. Melanie, thank you very much for doing the podcast with us and yes, taking thank time you. out of your busy schedule. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tons of fun. Um, Thanks, guys. And maybe, maybe if you didn't hate it or anything, you could do it again sometime. Yeah, you should come back. I'm totally into that. All right, <clears> cool. definitely do. Cool. Well, that's it. So, uh, again, you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. Just search Death Wish, Inc., You'll find us there, and uh, while you're there, give us a good rating um, because that makes more people listen. Maybe we'll get a feature on iTunes or something like that. Um, and if you don't, if you don't like the podcast, just close the window out immediately and go do something <laughs> else. Don't give us a one star. You're you're a dick if you give us a one star. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can subscribe on your favorite podcast app. I use Downcast. Go use that and subscribe. Just search us, Death Wish Inc. And we also put them on YouTube, so just go to youtube.com slash Death Wish Inc. Um, that's it. Bye. <laughs>